Good morning. Good morning. Are you happy to be here? Yes. Yeah? You're happy to be here, but you were happier the last two weeks when I wasn't here. Is that right? Yeah. Okay, it's one, it's one against everybody else, so there, all right? It's good to be back with my church family, and uh, it's good to see all of you here. What a beautiful Sabbath morning. Welcome to the happiest church on earth, and, uh, and it's getting to be that way uh, more and more. Uh, we've got uh, a few announcements, but the first one is dealing with something that's going to happen later in the service today. I want to bring Roy and Alexi, Alexis, come on up. We'll, we'll, put you, we'll put you right here between us, a rose yes. between the other things that go with roses. Yes. Good. I am so excited today. Alexis Noski has decided to commit her life to Jesus Christ, and you will see in just moments her symbolize that through baptism, and I am just thrilled. And so um, today, to mark the special day, we have a, a special baptism flower for you today, and we also have a certificate that will help remind you of exactly the emotions and, and just the joy of this special day that, that you can keep. But I would like to entertain a motion subject to Alexis's baptism here in just moments. I would like to entertain a motion that we accept Alexis into our local family membership here. So move second. Everyone in favor, raise your hand and say amen. Amen. We are so excited, so excited about your decision today, and I, I look forward to uh, baptizing you in the tank in just moments. And uh, Alexis, what did I promise you I was going to put in the water. What did I promise you? Truckload of ice. I, I, promised, I promised you I was going to put ice in the water, didn't I? Okay. I'll, I'll be in there. I, I want you to know I meant it. Who's going to baptize you? Pastor Ives. <laughs> See? Okay. <laughs> Congratulations. <laughs> We're looking forward to seeing it. Okay. Okay, we'll let them uh, go back and get ready because that's coming up right after the children's story. One announcement I want to make is our Adopt a Highway. How many of you have seen the Adopt a Highway sign? Okay, that's not even half. Just as you're heading south on Highway 29, just after you go over the Butler Bridge there, the south end of Napa, if you look on the right-hand side, you'll see an Adopt a Highway. It says Napa Community or it says a Napa Seventh-day Adventist Church. And uh, we have the next two miles of, of highway to clean from there. So next Sunday, a week from tomorrow, meet at the church at 9.30. If you have not seen the video, there's a video that you have to see before you can legally go out there. You need to be here at 9 o'clock and watch that come out. We are recommending that you do not wear shorts, wear long pants. It's not a matter of decency or standards or anything. It's for your protection. Long pants, I suggest that you tie them even around your boots. I think short sleeve shirts are okay, uh, but uh, Adam Harsony will be able to give you some other instructions and ideas there. But we need a good group out to, uh, to cover that territory. Last time we had, I think, five of us, and we couldn't uh, cover it all. So how many of you think you might be interested in coming out Sunday morning, a week from Sunday for a couple of hours? Okay, I'll stand here until we see, no, okay. We, we need a group, we need a group to come out uh, to do this, uh, probably about once a month. To keep, we want that to be the cleanest stretch of highway in, uh, in Napa County, all right? So it's time for children's story. Uncle Carl has a story for you. Uh, kids, come on down. Look for those dollar bills coming down. Always say thank you and uh, come on up and cover all the aisles, all right? How you doing, buddy? Good to see you. Hello, young lady.
We have uh, today on the Sabbath morning, we're celebrating our Father in heaven. Now, do any of you know what we're going to be celebrating tomorrow? Uh -uh. Here we go. Father's Day. That's right. So today we're celebrating our Father in heaven. Tomorrow we're going to be celebrating our fathers here on earth. So um, tell me, does anyone here tell me why we celebrate Father's Day? What's so special about fathers? They help you during life. Right. Anybody else have an answer to that question? What's so special about Father's Day or fathers? They are your parents. Yes. They deserve a break. <laughs> That's a good one. Good one. Yes. They love us. They love us. Yes. Now, anybody else want to say what's so special about Father's Day or fathers? No? Okay. Well, those are great answers. Now, I can tell you my... F oh, you have one? Okay. They spoil us. Ah, not necessarily a good thing. <laughs> okay, so um, those are great answers. What, uh, I had a special father. He wanted me to learn. He wanted me to think, be happy, but more importantly, he wanted to teach me values. And he taught me how important it was to always tell the truth, to respect your parents, to always be kind to others, and to be fair. Now, does, do any of you know someone else who teaches those same values? Huh? Do any of you? Huh? Yes. Your teachers. Okay. Anybody else know who teaches values about telling the truth and being fair? Yes. Pastor Ice. Yes. <laughs> anyone else? That's good. <laughs> Bonus points. <laughs> okay. Um, well, I'll, I'll tell you, um, I'll tell you who it is. It's your Father in heaven. It's Jesus, right? Jesus told you to tell the truth and respect your parents, be kind to others and be fair, right? Okay, so basically he taught all, all those values and more. Now, do any of you know how the Lord's Prayer starts? You say the Lord's Prayer all the time when you're in Sabbath school in the church? Yes? Oh, boy, you, you got all the answers. Dear Jesus. Dear Jesus, or our Father, who art in heaven, right? So that's what we're celebrating today. And so even though tomorrow is Father's Day here on earth, okay, our Father is with us, uh, our Father in heaven is with us all the time. And he loves each and every one of you. So, if you have uh, any thanks to give, give it to God today and tomorrow and every day. And tomorrow you can give thanks to your Father here on earth. So if any of you would like, as you go back to your seats, you can take one of these little cards and you can write on a little bit and give it to your Father as you go back to your seats. Thank you very much. Alexis, I'm so excited to be here in the baptistry with you today. Very, very special day for me, too. You realize that the very last sacramental duty that I get to perform here before I leave is your baptism. And that makes it an extra special Sabbath for me, too, because I get to leave doing one of the things I love to do the most, which is help people make a life commitment to Jesus Christ. And so today is a special day for me, too, and I will never forget this baptism. You've got some family and friends that are here to celebrate with you, and I want to invite them to go ahead and stand to their feet at this time. These are the people who've been with you that, that want to support you, and these are the people that you can run to at the times that 
are tough during your spiritual walk, these are the people that will always, always be there for you. Awesome. You may be seated. Alexis, I'm so excited. When, when we met uh, last week, this past week, um, it was just so fun to, uh, to, to meet with you. And as we went through this stuff, I can tell you only had one question. When will this guy stop talking and baptize me? So I know you're ready. I know you're excited about your new life in, in Jesus Christ. And so today, it truly is my privilege as a minister of the gospel to baptize you in the name of the Father, and of his Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Congratulations to you. Every time we have a baptism here, Pastor Marvin and I like to invite any of you whom the Holy Spirit is working on your heart, and maybe you have not had a chance yet to commit your life to Christ through baptism. We invite you at this time to fill out one of the community cards, put it in the offering plate, and let us know your wishes as well so that you can also join in the celebration of baptism. What a blessing we just saw. I was, I was so involved mentally, I forgot I'm up now. <laughs> Citizens of the New Jerusalem. I'm sorry, I just can't help saying it because that's what we are. What a wonderful blessing we have to look forward to today and forever. All of you, all of us, our families. So, as we start our praise for our Father this morning, if you have a green hymnal in front of you, you can turn to 790, page 790, and we're going to sing the first and third verses of We Gather Together to Ask the Lord's Blessing. If you will turn to 631 in the green hymnal. We will sing the Lord's Prayer. 631 in the green hymnal. Our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom. as 
as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors and lead us not into temptation but deliver us from evil for thine is the kingdom and the to say thank you Jesus because that's a very high note in that song and we do thank him every day for every blessing even the little high notes now 526 526 first and fourth verse we serve a God who is our solid rock on which we can stand in any storm. And we all know that life brings its storms, and that's a given. My hope is built on nothing less than Jesus' blood and righteousness. I dare not trust the sweetest frame, but wholly lean on Jesus' name. On Christ the solid rock I stand, all other ground is sinking sand. All other ground is sinking sand. When he shall come with trumpet sound, oh, may I then in him be found, dressed in his righteousness alone, faultless to stand before the throne. On Christ the solid rock I stand, all other ground is sinking sand. All other ground is sinking sand. Now, a triumph song. 772 in the hymnal. When we all get to heaven. All right, let's stand up and sing this because that's going to be the most awesome day. Well, the most awesome day... The first most awesome day is when Jesus comes and gets us, right? And uh, I think there's going to be quite a few awesome days that follow that. And this is one of them. When we all get to heaven, we'll sing the first, third, and fourth verses. Sing the wondrous love of Jesus. Jesus, sing his mercy and his grace in the mansions bright and blessed he'll prepare for us a place when we all get to heaven what a day of rejoicing that will be when we all victory let us then the 
truth and faithful, trusting, serving every day. Just one glimpse of Him in glory will the toils of life repay. When we all get to heaven, what a day of rejoicing that will be. When we all see Jesus, we'll sing and shout the victory. Onward to the prize before us, soon his beauty will behold. Soon the pearly gates will open, then shall tread the streets of gold. When we all get to heaven, what a day of rejoicing that will be. When we all see Jesus, we'll sing and shout the victory. You may be seated, and I pray you receive a Sabbath day's blessing. We have an opportunity to participate in our church family life through the offering, which today is for the church budget. Let's pray. Dear God, we thank you for the many blessings that make it even possible for us to give something back. We pray that you will bless the offering that is given. May it be used to bless your children. Amen.
Uh, I was hoping that the Rosenbrands were here today. Are, am I missing them? Ron and Jackie and Connor? Not here, because we want to have, uh, as part of the morning prayer this morning, uh, that Doug's going to have, uh, Connor Rosenbrand is leaving this evening for Haiti for a week. He's going with a group uh, from another church in St. Helena, and they're going to go down there and uh, work in some uh, interesting areas. He's been uh, properly trained and properly immunized, uh, but they were asking for special prayer. And if he was here, I, was gonna, I wanted him to come up front and we'd actually just put our hands on him for blessing while he goes. But I don't, I don't see them, so we're still going to include them, but I just wanted you to know what that uh, was all about as Jackie sent me the information. So keep, uh, keep Connor in your prayers in this coming week. I invite you to kneel. Loving creator of the universe, we thank you for the opportunity to bring our individual spirits together and to praise yours and to know that we are your children. We are one family with you. We pray for all of us that are struggling. We all struggle, but uh, Nyla Bazani is uh, particularly uh, struggling with health issues now, and. We pray that you will continue to support her. We pray for the Raymond family. And we pray for Connor, who is allowing his hands and his body to be your hands uh, to care for some of your most uh, vulnerable children. We thank you and bless you for being here with us. Amen. Ocean flows from you. 
Thank you, Susie and Garrick. Thank you for the beautiful, beautiful music. Today is a, a significant day. We haven't made a big to-do about it because Pastor Roy did not want a big to-do made about it. He didn't want a farewell, and uh, I'll take that to mean that that's because he didn't want to leave. Amen. Yeah. But we are going to make you come up front along with your wife and your children. I have the authority now as the new executive pastor, <laughs> title which I hope I carry for a very brief period of time. But uh, we do want to express to Rory and Dinah and to Riley and Colton just how much we've enjoyed the last two and a half years. It's been amazing, and uh, you've left a mark here, a mess here, <laughs> that's going to take me a long time to clean up. We, we were counting on a lot longer than two and a half years, but, uh, you know, that's the way God works, and, and I have just a card. That's all we're giving you is a card, and uh, it is not a farewell card. I looked and I just, I saw these farewell cards about, you know, tears and how sad we are to see you go, and that, that's all part of it, but I know that that's, that's not what this is about, and this is not what, what you want. So I have instead, it's actually a congratulations card. <laughs> it, it is, seriously. I thought, I thought it'd be a get well card. <laughs> he, he thought it'd be a get well card, yeah. It's a congratulatory card because God has brought this transition into being, and we fully accept that, and, and therefore it is, it's a time of congratulations for hearing God's voice, for letting God's voice direct your path, and, uh, you know, it, it, it saddens us, and uh, it's going to be a tough act to follow. I mean, to have two boys as good looking as this, I mean, who's, who's going to follow that act, you know? No um, Donna, you have been such a sweet blessing to this church. You have not tried to draw any attention to yourself. You've been there. You've worked behind the scenes silently and faithfully, and I admire that in a pastor's wife. You are going to be enormously missed. Riley and Colton, you guys are fantastic. And we've only got to watch you grow a little bit, but you keep busting those boards, and I'm looking forward to seeing a black belt one day uh, soon, and uh, you're just two fine young men. Uh, Roy, you've created a lot of things here for us, and uh, I will be calling you. Now, exactly again, which button am I supposed to push to get this to happen on the computer? So uh, I hope you don't change your, uh, your cell phone number anytime soon. But... This is, is a card and just a simple, in, uh, insufficient token of our appreciation uh, for you guys and for what you have meant to us. But uh, keep praying for us. We will keep praying for you. You are forever a part of this church family. Thank you. You've, you've made that kind of a mark. So. I love you, buddy. Thank you. Uh, that was something that I was hoping wouldn't come until after I had retired, but uh, 
But you know, God, God leads and He moves in ways that, are, that we may not even always understand, and, and it's okay. I told you a couple of weeks ago, three weeks ago, you know, the future of this church does not depend upon them or me or, or any of us. We are God's church. It's in His hands, and I trust Him completely. Uh, but God does know how to make it difficult at times. All right. Back in the 70s, some of you are old enough to remember the 70s. Uh, some of you can remember the 1870s, perhaps. But <laughs> Back in the 1970s, a young man by the name of Brad McIntyre, and it's been interesting because I, I've looked him up on Facebook and I, I, or on, on Google, and, and I see him doing some interesting things lately. But back in the 1970s, Brad McIntyre wrote a song entitled The Adventist Blues. Any of you remember that song? Good. Well, let me share it with you. I'm, I'm just going to read the lyrics. And I, and I, love, the, I love the meter of, of the lyrics. It kind of reminds me of a, of a Ray Stevens song. I was once going to do an evangelistic series using Ray Stevens songs as my special music each week. Uh, it would have been an evangelistic series like no other. All right? Now, I don't drink and I don't swear. I don't take dope or have long hair. And I go to church each week. Oh, yes, I do. I never eat before going to bed. I'll drink a glass of juice instead. And I jog each day at least a mile or two. You know, all my life I've been pretty good. I've always done just what I should. And my parents were missionaries overseas. I got all A's in Bible class and studied hard so I could pass. I even bought my books from the ABCs. I know my memory verse each week, and when called upon, I can always speak. I'm never at a loss for words, you see, because I've been educated at Andrews U, Loma Linda, and Oakwood too, and I've even done my time at PUC. <laughs> now, I've been taught to keep the law. You don't goof up or have a flaw, lest we embarrass mom and dad. And you don't wear jeans, you don't wear slacks, you can't eat this, you can't eat that. Rules, rules, rules is all I've ever had. I never listen to rock and roll, watch TV, and never bowl. I'm, I'm a vegetarian all the way. Of course, I pay a faithful tithe and give donations on the side, and when they have potluck, I always stay. <laughs> and when it came time to wed, I played it cool and kept my head and prayed about it, well, once or twice. At any rate, I found the one, and though some thought she was sort of young, she's at least an SDA and kind of nice. And when each November rolls around, I take my can and hit the town and go door to door for the World Service's appeal. And of course, you know, I never fail to buy peanut butter from Collegedale. If you get it by the case, they give you quite a deal. I study my lesson every day, and when I take time, I'll pray, but I don't want to get fanatical, you know. In fact, I've just become a master guide, and I know the words to side by side. I mean, how much further up can a mortal go? Yes, I found the church where I belong. I don't think I've done anything wrong for at least two years, or maybe three. I'm sure I'm walking in the light. Sometimes I'm bored, but that's all right, for there's a crown in heaven just for me. But recently, I've heard some talk. They say I need a closer walk with Jesus if I'll only let him in. Well, I'm all for that, and I'll give it a try, although I stop and wonder why and ask myself, just where does he fit in? Let's pray. Father, help us to find today a glimpse as to where you need to fit in. We're here today on the day that we believe you have blessed and set aside and, and made holy. But the real question, Lord, is why are we here why did we come, and what will we leave with? I pray, Lord, that today will not just be a, a custom or a tradition or an observance, but I pray that it will be a meaningful interaction with you, our Savior, our Lord, our friend, and our guide. Speak to us, Lord. Speak to each individual heart with each individual message that we each individually need to hear today. In Jesus' name, amen. 
Let's go straight to the story this morning. The Bible story is found in Luke chapter 4. Luke chapter 4, and at the beginning, we find Jesus, full of the Holy Spirit, returned from the Jordan where he had just been baptized, filled with the Holy Spirit, and he was led by the Spirit in the desert where for 40 days he was tempted by the devil. He ate nothing during those days, and at the end of them, he was hungry. <laughs> you think? <laughs> I mean, I, I can't imagine that. My wife and I have fasted twice for a week. Twice for a week. And uh, we found that to be a very interesting spiritual experience. First day was really challenging. The, the second day was a little bit challenging. By the third day, we were doing fine. Kept up all of our activities and, and, and found our minds clear. And, and it is a, an exercise, a discipline that I would encourage you to experiment with sometime. 40 days without food? Yeah, that's, I mean, uh, we remember the times of the hunger strikes in, the, in uh, Ireland and, and all of that, and uh, it's amazing. He was weak. He was hungry. Pick it up in verse 14. Jesus, at the end of the time of temptation, returned to Galilee, again, in the power of the Spirit, and the news about him spread through the whole countryside. He taught in their synagogues, and everyone praised him. And he went to Nazareth, where he had been brought up, and on the Sabbath day, he went into the synagogue, as was his custom, and he stood up to read. As was his custom. Is that all it is? Was it just his custom? Why are you here this morning? Why are you here? Some of you came because there was a special baptism. Some of you came because you're visiting. Some of you came perhaps because you've heard about this erratic, uncontrollable preacher that's in Napa that you, know, you just wanted to see if it was really true. So, thank you. <laughs> Some of you have come because you know that Jesus was going to be here today on this Sabbath day, and, it, and it's part of an experience that you have. Uh, you, remember, you remember Dr. Izdebsky? You remember a few weeks ago I showed you the slides of the before and after picture and how touched this doctor was with, uh, with what he found and how he asked us to be praying for him. And then when I saw him the last time, he wanted to know, did, did you really, did you show that to the congregation? And I said, yeah, I, I showed it to him. And uh, I said, you can watch it on YouTube. You know, and he grabbed his computer and he pulled up YouTube and he said, show me where. And I showed it to him and he says, I'm going to watch it. I got an email from him Thursday. Got an email from him Thursday. He said, Thank you. I mean, I, won't, I was going to read it to you, but it's, it, it's too uh, complimentary, too flattering. He said, thank you for your insights and, your, uh, and your, your presentation. He said, I watched the whole thing. I was deeply touched by your message. And, and I want I thank you for the prayers and the interest that your church family has in me. May God bless you in your continued ministry to him. And I will keep my promise. One, I want to come and worship with you and visit your church one Sunday. <laughs> so he didn't, he didn't get everything. I wrote him back and I said, as the Seventh-day Adventist pastor, our worship services are on Saturday morning. But if you come on Sunday, you're sure to get a parking space and a really good seat. And he wrote back and said, ha ha, see you on the 9th <laughs> when he has the opportunity to get even with me, all right? 
Was it simply Christ's custom? Was it his habit, something to be observed, his tradition, or, or was it something much bigger? Let's go on. Luke chapter 4, beginning with verse 17. The scroll of the prophet Isaiah was handed to him. He unrolled it and found the place where this was written. The Spirit of the Lord is on me because he has anointed me to preach good news to the poor. He has sent me to proclaim freedom for the prisoners and recovery of sight for the blind, to release the oppressed, and to proclaim the year of the Lord's favor. That's beautiful. That's powerful. But this quotation, shared and spoken by Jesus himself here, is referring in Isaiah, and Jesus is using, understanding that, this is referring to the year of Jubilee. Do you know what the year of Jubilee is? You read about it in Leviticus 21. The, the year of Jubilee was the year following every seven years of Sabbaths, or seven times seven years. The 50th year was a year of Jubilee. It was to be a celebration when all of the fields were left to rest. Okay? You better be prepared for it ahead of time. All of the fields were left to rest for that year. Everyone was to return to his homeland. Slaves were allowed to go free and go back to their families. It was a proclamation of freedom. Freedom for everyone and everything. Everything returned to its original state. What do you think that's a symbol of? It's a symbol of the true jubilee when Jesus comes, isn't it? When everything will be set free. We'll all be equal. But now, listen to what he says next. Verses 20 and 21. And, and try to picture this. You're in the synagogue... And you're listening to this man that you've heard so many stories about, and you're excited to hear him in person, and you've heard him read this text from Isaiah. And then he rolled up the scroll, he gave it back to the attendant, and he sat down. The eyes of everyone in the synagogue were fastened on him. And I'm sure that he sat there for a moment and made eye contact with them. And he began by saying to them, today, this scripture is fulfilled in your hearing. My friends, that may be the most powerful statement in all of scripture. Today, what I've just read to you from this messianic prophecy in Isaiah, today, this is fulfilled in your ears. Jesus is saying that the ultimate Sabbath, the ultimate Sabbath, the time when every living thing will be set free and allowed to rest, is fulfilled by his presence. Jesus proclaims himself to be the Messiah, but here Jesus is declaring himself to be the Jubilee. That hit me between the eyes this week in a dramatic way, and, and I've, been, I've been working on this sermon again and again, and each time I sat down and, and went through it, I would, I would make little changes, and this morning I got into it, and I wish I'd had six more hours to prepare this message because it was just like God was just unraveling things for me and impressing me, but there's always next week. Jesus is the Jubilee Sabbath. The Jubilee Sabbath and Jesus are one in the same things. That's, you're going to have to let that marinate 
for a while. The Sabbath day is a day of rest, but the ultimate rest, the Jubilee, is found in Jesus. We are a church. We are a denomination that was formed by a study of last day events. Isn't that true? That, that's how we came into existence, was through a study of the prophecies of Daniel and, and, and putting things together with Revelation and, and time and end time and all of this. That, that's how we came about. We have always seen ourselves as having a message to prepare people for the second coming of Christ. Isn't that true? Isn't that the heart of what we do? The three angels' message, you ever heard about that? The three angels' message is a message of preparation. Revelation 14, verses 6 and 7. Then I saw another angel flying in midair, and he had the eternal gospel to proclaim to those who live on the earth, to every nation, every tribe, language, and people. And he said in a loud voice, Fear God and give him glory because the hour of his judgment has come. Worship him who made the heavens, the earth, the sea, and the springs of water. And we have taken that and, and compared that to Exodus 20 and, and all of the other places, and we understand that to be that the creator, the same one who made everything in six days, and on the seventh day, blessed it and made it a, a day of holiness, a day of rest, a day of communication, a day of fellowship with him and him alone. That same Jesus is the one who is being talked about here in Luke chapter 4 and back in Isaiah 61. Jesus is the ultimate Sabbath experience. We cannot be prepared for the last days, which some of us, I believe, will still live to see. But just for the record, I want you to know, I still believe that the second coming of Christ is near. I believe that it's very near. I see what's happening in the world, and, and I believe that, that it could well and probably would come in my lifetime. I'm willing to give God just a lot of leeway there because it doesn't matter to me. I don't care if he comes in my lifetime or not. That's not my problem to figure out. That's his. I trust him. He'll come when he's ready. I don't want him to come a moment before. But I look around the world and I see the things that are transpiring and the things that are in the everyday news. I believe that the coming of Jesus is near. But we can't be prepared for that day by adhering to any set of standards. That will not get us ready. We can't be prepared by attaining doctrinal correctness. That's not what it's about. That's not what's going to get us ready. We can only be prepared by being covered by his robe of righteousness. That's what's going to get me ready. We can only be prepared by being and living in Christ Jesus. You can absorb and practice 28 fundamental beliefs and be lost. Okay? Is that putting down 28 fundamental beliefs? No. But that's not where our safety and our salvation comes from. You can absorb and practice 28 fundamental beliefs and be lost, and you can always kneel at the foot of Jesus and be found. At the foot of the cross, at the feet of Jesus, you can be found. As I was working through this, you know, some, something is happening as I come down the, the final lap of active paid ministry. You know, as, as I see retirement, I'll never quit preaching, but as I see retirement in the coming future, I'm continually grappling with, God, what is it that you want me to focus in, focus on during this time? The time that I have left, the breath that I have left, the voice that I have left. I don't know if you can hear it in my voice, but in the last couple of weeks, I've noticed a hoarseness and a crackling start to, to come back into play. 
You know, what does that mean? Well, we'll find out July 9. I can tell you with absolute certainty, I don't care. I gave it to God when we did the anointing service here. It's His. We are, we are reaching and, and developing a relationship with Dr. Izdebsky. His heart is being touched. Whatever God wants to use this for to do that is perfectly okay with me. But as long as I have the opportunity to preach, God, what is it? And the sense that I had, and I don't want you to take this wrong, the sense that I had was that in, to some extent, the verses from Isaiah 61 and from, from Luke 4 apply to me as a spokesperson for God, an unworthy spokesperson for God. He has called me to preach the good news to the poor. He has sent me to proclaim freedom for the prisoners of sin, recovery of sight to the blind, to release the oppressed, and to proclaim the jubilee, which is Jesus Christ. He has not called me to instruct or enforce standards, but to call you to a complete surrender to Jesus. If any of you have read the book that I wrote a couple of years ago, you find in it the story where while I was pastoring in Hong Kong, I accepted the task of confronting the church organist with her red fingernail polish. That is an experience that causes me so much pain to this day. When I recall the look on her face, when I decided that that was something, when, when the board decided, and I accepted the board's challenge to go to her and confront her with this, Jesus did not call me to a ministry of anti-fingernail polish or anything else that goes into the category of standards. If you completely surrender to Him, He will set the standards in your life, and He knows what things you need to change in your life, and it may not be the same things that I need to change in my life. We had a wonderful Tuesday last week with Ingrid's cousin in Frederick, Maryland. They, they live... Uh, in another town in Maryland. We met there on a, on a California weather day. It was in the 70s, low humidity, sunny. It was great. This is a man who was a Seventh-day Adventist pastor for a few years. His relationship with the church was, was getting rocky, but the, the death blow came when some of his elders came to his house on a Friday night and took it upon themselves to open the cupboards in their kitchen to see what was in there. In the name of Jesus. He left the Seventh-day Adventist Church and became a minister for the United Methodist Church. We served faithfully. The first time I met him was while this was very fresh and raw, and I, as a new Adventist, determined to be the best Adventist that one could possibly be. It was an uncomfortable introduction. Through the years, Bruno and I have, have built a relationship built on Christ-centeredness and grace, and not trying to determine who's right and who's wrong, but whether we are surrendered if you surrender to Him, He will set the standards. My fear, as I preach and emphasize this, is that too many people will see this as a chance and as an excuse to live a life without parameters. Hmm. The reality is that a life surrendered to Jesus is a life of constant correction that will get more and more strict the closer you get to Jesus, but strict for the right reasons. There's nothing wrong with our standards unless your goal is to meet the standards. You don't need to meet the standards. You need to meet Jesus. Amen. And when you meet Jesus and surrender to Him, He'll show you what you need to do. And we don't have to watch each other. You want to come look in my cupboards? 
Probably not. What do I want you to take home today? What do I want you to take home today? You can keep the Sabbath very strictly and miss the whole point. You can defend the doctrinal correctness of the Sabbath and completely miss the divinity of the day. What a loss. If it is simply your custom and tradition to, to observe the Sabbath, it's going to be a greater source of frustration than fulfillment. The Sabbath is a gift. Yes. I said it before when conference president and your former pastor, Jim Pedersen, was here. I've given up the Sabbath as a doctrine. Okay, did you hear the whole statement? I've given up the Sabbath as a doctrine. I love the Sabbath. I'm reading a book. I've read a book. I'm reading it with my wife. We're reading it in Christianity 101. The best book on the Sabbath that I have encountered to this day, written by Senator Joe Lieberman, a devout Jew, on the gift of rest, where he just talks about their experience relationally in, in welcoming and observing and preparing for and experiencing the Sabbath. And while he and I would, would part directions on, on many things that he talks about, we read in, in today in our Christian 101 where he talks about how they anticipate the coming of the Messiah, and I want to say, Joe, he's here. He's the day that you are celebrating. But if we would as meticulously prepare for Jesus as they prepare for the Sabbath, we'd have a much deeper and more meaningful relationship with him. The Sabbath is a gift. I love the Sabbath and the, the gift that it brings to me. It's a gift of time. Jesus is the gift of eternity. It's a gift of rest. Jesus is a place of rest. It's a gift that depicts salvation, redemption, and freedom from everything that's wrong in this world. Do we need a day like that? Did God know that we would need a day like that? You can be as good as Brad McIntyre illustrated, but if there's no room for a living walk with Jesus in your daily life, you may find that your spirituality turns up empty and dry. And so there's this old, this old saying that we put on the screens, no Jesus, no rest. But if you know Jesus, then you know rest. I'll have more to say about our priorities as followers of Christ next week in a message entitled, Dinner at Martha's House. But let me just close with this adapted, with these adapted words of Jesus. Come to Jesus, all you who are weary and burdened, and he will give you rest. Take his yoke upon you and learn from him, for he is gentle and humble in heart, and you will find rest. You will find Sabbath for your souls. Let's pray. Father God, help us to take all that we know about you and not compartmentalize it with proof texts, but help us to not just learn it, but help us to know it, to know about you, more importantly, to know you intimately, day by day, moment by moment, step by step, to surrender to you and allow you to, to fill us and to use us. Lord, help us to see who you really are. Jesus, the Jubilee, when all things are set free. Help us, Lord. Let us see Jesus. In his name we pray. Amen.